Welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and in today's episode we will make sure that our doors are finally functioning so we can walk in, open those, close those and our windows are going to be opening and closing as well. So let's get started. So the first thing would be opening up our actual buildables that we want to interact with. So let's open up our doors. That's taking a while and the build window. So over here, what we want to do is create a couple of variables. So uh, the one that's really important is we got to figure out what is the default rotation for this object in its world so that we know uh, which rotation it, this one should take. So uh, let's call this default rotation. And let's go ahead and let's make this into a rotator. And then inside of our door, let's go ahead, let's create ourselves a begin play event. And over here, what we want to do is we want to get the object. So our static mesh component, and we want to get world rotation. And then we can set our default rotation to be this world rotation. So now on begin play, this is going to store this information for us. So that's good. Now, the next thing is to actually make this function. So for that, let's go ahead, let's open up our build interface and let's give this like the interaction uh, function, which event uh, essentially, which will allow us to interact with this object. So let's create ourselves a new function inside of our interface and let's call this interact with build. Compile and save that. And now inside of our build door, we have this event available to us. So we can right click and look for event interact with build. There we go. So we're going to need another variable. First, we got to figure out whether this thing is open or not. So let's create ourselves another variable. Let's call this is open. And this is going to be a Boolean value. So true or false, open or closed. And another one would be uh, is opening. And uh, that's also a Boolean because we don't want to interact with it. We don't want to glitch it out while it's in its process. Uh, so this is a handy thing to do. Otherwise, later on, well, uh, we might start to glitch this out. It might jump open and close and glitch to all over the place. Uh, so let's use that one. So real quick, the first thing that we want to do is get ourselves a is opening value and do a if branch check on this one to see if it's already opening or not. Now, if it is, we're not gonna do anything. We're gonna do only something if it's not opening. So over here, what we're gonna do is let's do a, ourselves another branch and let's use the is open so that we know in which rotation this object is currently. So the next thing would be to create ourselves a timeline. So let's go ahead, let's add ourselves a timeline and over here, let's double click this and let's set up our timeline. So I want my doors to be open within two seconds. So for the length of this, I'm going to set this to two. So that's going to give the length two seconds. And I'm going to add a float track to this. Now I'm going to right click, add a key, select this key to make sure this is yellow, set up a time at zero. So at the very beginning, I want the value to be at zero. So I want these doors to just stay in their position by default. And now I'm going to right click this again, add another key. And now at the very end of it, so the time is two seconds. I want this to be rotated 90 degrees. Here we go. So now we're going to face a small issue visually. We're not going to be able to really see that. So what you can do is click on this uh, zoom to fit vertical. And now you're going to be able to see this, this line, this, uh, this timeline essentially. So that's good. Let's go ahead. Let's go back to our event graph over here. So now if the door is open, we actually want to do reverse and if it's uh, if it's not then we want to do play or better yet we can play from start and reverse from end so that will function as well now if you don't want this to be crisscross you can do a not and this is going to return you the opposite value and now with using the not we can reconnect these the other way around and this is going to be a little bit nicer and we can actually do the same thing for our is opening we can use a not and then on true, we can proceed with the second branch. So that's just for the visuals, uh, the lines themselves. There's no real difference in the code itself. It's going to essentially do the same thing regardless. So um, the next thing is updating our location. So what we want to do is on update, we want to set our is opening to be true. 
and that will mean that well this thing is already running it's already doing something now the next thing that we want to do over here is grab our static mesh component so these are our actual doors and we're going to rotate these and we want to set their world rotation so set world rotation plug that in Let's split this because we are only going to change the Z value. All the other rotations will stay the same because our door is going to rotate in the Z axis. And what we are going to do is we are going to uh, grab our default rotation. We're going to split that. And from this, we are going to grab our new track. So this is going to return a zero till 90 within two seconds. We're going to do a plus float plus float. And we're going to add our default rotation plus this increment value. And we're going to plug that into our Z axis. There we go. And then once we are done with the, uh, the timeline, it's going to run for two seconds. On finished, we want to set that it is no longer opening. So we want to set is opening back to false over here. And at this point, we could do some branch checks to check in which uh, rotation it is right now and that's going to tell us which rotation it is and then we could set our is open or not but instead what i'm just simply going to do is i'm going to set it from both of these branches like so and now essentially if we are playing this from start it's going to add to our rotation it's going to make them open so we're going to set this to is open to be true because they're going to be open and for this one we're going to set it to false well because it's no longer going to be open if you used the version without the not, then make sure that these are the other way around instead. So just look at these ones. So these pins should match. These ones will be opposite for you. So uh, that's pretty much it for this one. So let's go ahead and let's try to run this. So we have our event interact with build. So let's run it from our third person character. Here we go. We have our third person character. And for this, I'm just going to do a simple keyboard e key event so i've done this millions of times already we have a uh, we did this in the build component itself we're going to do a line trace by a channel we're going to grab our follow camera we're going to get its world location and we are also going to get its forward vector to get the start and end positions for the line tracing now uh, the forward vector multiplied with an integer and then these two together world location plus forward vector times uh, let's say 300 and that's going to be our starting position and for the ending position the same thing uh, so we want this this and in the end and the end is going to be let's say like 1500 units so we're going to use the visibility trace channel we're going to do a branch to see if we actually hit something and then we're going to break the hit result and on true we're going to run our interact with build and the target needs to be the hit actor so let's go ahead and let's test this out let's see how this works so hit play b let's grab ourselves a door place it down hit e here we go. The doors are getting open and the doors are getting closed. Uh, maybe it looks like one, two seconds is a little bit long. So I'm just going to change this to one. And also make sure you select your keyframe and change its time to one as well. So it actually is there. Otherwise, it's going to be at 45 and it's going to stay there. So now let's try that again. Whoops, wrong key. There we go. So that's a little bit better. Nice. So let's do the same thing for our window. So essentially the idea is the same. So I'm going to go to my build door event graph. And over here, what we want to do is something similar, but not quite. So I'm just going to copy all of this into our build window. I'm going to paste this in and it's going to give us a couple of issues. So whenever we copy this, try to compile, it's going to give us a lot of errors. That is because, well, we don't have all of these values, uh, these variables essentially. So let's right click them and let's create a variable for the default rotation for the is opening is open. And now if we recompile this, all the errors should be gone. Now with the windows, this is a little bit different because the 
we have two meshes for our windows. We have mesh number one and we have mesh number two, and these need to be rotated in different rotations. So at this point, this one needs to be, we need to add to this. We do need to do a plus for this window. Well, we need to do a minus. And since we have two of these, well, we need two default rotations. So what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm actually gonna make this into an array. I'm gonna change the variables type, and now we're going to have two of those. So in the event graph, again, we're gonna have a bunch of errors. So don't worry, let's start by this one, fixing this one. So let's delete that. Let's make sure our default rotation has two entries. Here we go, two rotations. And instead of the static mesh component, we just wanna grab these two static meshes. We don't need the root component for these. So uh, let's align these like this. Let's connect these things. We need two of those. We need to get the world, world rotation for both of those. And let's get our default rotation and let's set array element. So we need to set the array index zero with one of these and then we want to do exactly the same thing with the other one. But for this one, the index needs to be set to one. There we go. So that's all good. Now we have another issue over here and let's delete that node. Whoops. And inside of our build window, let's go ahead. Let's get this value. Let's then drag from it. Let's get a copy to index zero. We can then split that and we can plug in the Z in here. And then let's delete the static mesh component. And instead, let's go ahead and let's get our static mesh for this. Let's connect this. And now one of our windows is going to be rotating, but the other one is not. So let's make sure it is. So at least one of them is rotating. Here we go. Opening and closing. So that's all good. Now we got to do the same thing for the other one. So I'm just going to copy this set world rotation. I'm going to grab the other static mesh, plug that into the target so that it rotates the other one as well. And then let's copy our default rotation. Now let's change the index to one so that we get the rotation of the other object instead. And then we want to grab this and we want to do multiply. We want to do float times float. And in this case, what we want to do is we want to multiply this with minus one so that it would return us a negative value so that it would rotate this thing the other way. Otherwise, if we don't, well, then one of the windows is going to go one way and the other one is going to go the other way. So then we can add those together just like we did over here, Z plus that value, and then we can plug it into the Z. So now both of these windows should be rotating the same way. Here we go, so that's nice. Now, if we leave this step out, if we don't use the times minus one, like I said, one of them is gonna go one way and the other one is going to go the other way, as you can see. So that's not what we want. So just make sure you do with multiply this with minus one and it's gonna give you the correct value then. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. Uh, let's go ahead and real quick, test this in an actual building to make sure that we can walk in it and leave it. So we have these guys, we have the doors, we have window one, two, three, and four. And let's start opening and closing those. There we go. So that's pretty good. And the doors are opening as well. So yeah, uh, that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you found this useful. If you did, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, comment, all that good stuff. Join my Discord and uh, yeah, see you in the next one.